Hello nerds and geeks, this is Matt Petrowski bringing you these videos over at QWERTY.com or you found this on YouTube, Vimeo, wherever you found it. More stuff over at QWERTY.com or on this channel. So we're taking a look at a cool little thing that I uh, really enjoy. I use Vim, but we're taking a look at the Goyo plugin. This is distraction-free writing for Vim. Now I've been using Vim for a long time, but I also use some other applications. As I bring up, uh, I'm using Launch Bar here. IA Writer is a really popular tool, and as I bring this up, um, obviously you can compose whatever you want to type. Stuff here, blah, blah, blah. So as I compose, what's really nice is this, this particular editor just, it's distraction free. Obviously you can go in and you can full screen it. And what's cool is you've got this centered content and nothing else is on the screen. But as I full screened this, what you can't see is I have a second screen and off to the side, it completely hijacked that screen. Now you, there are some hacks that you can do so that that doesn't actually happen but it doesn't allow me to have my other monitor available for me to see. And also one of the biggest setbacks on this is I can't actually change the font size. So for example, I can drag this and I can make it much larger and you can see right there between those two, it'll actually get a little bit bigger. But when we look at the view text size, they've made some decisions in IA Writer that you cannot control. I cannot make this text larger than it is right there. So there's tons of stuff to love about IA Writer. In fact, down at the bottom, they have all this cool stuff, all the stuff that you see down here, where you can actually select on whether you want to view syntax, format, stats, etc. Stats is going to tell you your characters. Let's switch cursors here. Characters, five words, two sentences, uh, you know, whatever reading time is. It's got an integrated markdown viewer, all kinds of different things. But these aren't things that you cannot do with Vim. You can do them with Vim. In fact, I use a program called, uh, oops, Marked that I love for doing my previews for when I'm doing markdown stuff. But we're taking a look at the actual writing or the composing here of what's going on. Now I have to assume as I quit this out that you obviously already know about Vim. You know about your VimRC. You know how to configure things. So we're gonna take a look at this. Uh, let's open up Vim. And we've got that going right now. Now this thing that's starting off, if you aren't familiar with this, your Vim will actually come up probably with a lot of stuff in here that'll tell you who it was created by, the version, etc. I'm actually using a plugin here called Startify, which Startify will open up a screen and allow you to show all of your recent files that you've been working on um, and uh, basically all of your sessions down there at the bottom. Well, let's start with an empty buffer. Actually, I'm going to edit... And I believe on my desktop, I have a goyo.txt. Let's see if that opens. There it does. So here's the thing about using Vim. Vim is so customizable that what happens is you can write a bunch of text. So as I'm writing this, the uh, text width is set to break. And so what happened is you can see right there, watch what happens as I get to the end of this line and I get right to this point right here where I hit 80 columns. My column width is currently set within Vim, which you can set, we'll take a look at that, that as soon as I hit that 81st, boom, it just made a new line. Now many times I don't want to do that, but a lot of the time I'm working in Vim for the purpose of editing code, but there are times that I want to do some distraction-free writing. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, convert these lines right here. I'm going to join them so that I have a line that is basically just one solid line there. This is actually how I want the text to actually be represented. And so now I've got this stuff where, okay, this is wrapped all the way off the screen. I don't wanna see this. I wanna be able to actually, if I came in here and I uh, set the line break on and I also set wrap, what's gonna happen is I'm now wrapping, I'm getting the view that I want. But the fact is I might be editing another file where I don't want this to be turned on currently. So that's where we enter into this Goyo uh, little plugin for Vim. So what I can do down at the bottom is I can issue my command here and I can go Goyo. And what's gonna happen is it's gonna take me right into a full screen view and I can control everything about this with regards to the width. So as I jump here, I can even uh, turn on my numbers if I want to really quickly. I did that with the unimpaired plugin. 
Uh, it's got a shortcut for showing the numbers off and on. Um, what I'm able to do is I'm able to now write distraction feed. Now this went full screen right when I entered Goyo and it will exit full screen and my other monitor, which you can't see attached, is actually showing me all of the stuff on that monitor. It is great. So I'm able to do all of my uh, composing right here with all of my powerful Vim. If I want to go to the beginning line, actually I can go, you know, to the beginning, I can go to the end, I can go up, I can jump by words, um, you know, everything that you're used to within Vim. And as soon as I want to exit, I just type in Goyo, and that will put me right back to where I was before. Now, of course, I have to move my window, but I could even set and change that if I wanted to really modify. And the cool thing is, is if I have another program or another file open in a buffer, let's say it's my uh, VimRC, I can go back and forth between these, and what I'm doing is I'm setting all of my settings to be local when I actually invoke Goyo. So whatever plugin installer you're using or whether you're going to be doing it manually, you're going to have to go through that process. All I'm going to show you down at the bottom of my file is I'm going to show you where I've got my Goyo settings. Now they all start right here where I've got Goyo going on right there you have to take these settings and then modify them so that they work the way that you want to work with Goyo. Goyo doesn't have by default all of the different settings that you want. And I took some of these and then modified them slightly so that they would work the way that I want to work when I like to go into my distraction free writing. So here, let's take a look at some of the settings. Um, the default for the width of Goyo is 80. So I currently have it set to the default right here. But you can set it to whatever you want. So for example, if I was to change this to uh, replace it to 40, and now I'll just go ahead and save this file and I'll source it. So I just sourced it. Now I'll uh, go into Goyo again. And of course it's gonna take me in with that. You can see that the width is actually smaller here. And it's automatically switched the background to a light background as opposed to dark. Again, those are all uh, commands that were given to this function of Goyo Enter. Let's get rid of my uh, highlighting there. So this is a really cool little plugin for being able to get in and out of this other than having to move my window around right here. And here's how it works. Goyo has its own settings, which you can take a look at on the Goyo page, but also it has these uh, two functions, the Goyo enter and the Goyo exit. And you can see that on enter, one of the things I'm doing is I'm setting my line break and I'm using a set local so that it only applies to the current buffer whatever it is that I'm working on. So I'm turning on the line break, I'm turning on wrapping, uh, setting the margin to zero so nothing gets automatically, or the text width to zero so nothing automatically gets uh, you know, split where I don't want it to split. Uh, if you have the GUI running, which in this case I've got uh, GVim if you're on Windows or MacVim if you're on uh, the Mac, then you can set it to automatically go to full screen. You can set the background color to go to light. You can set your line spacing to be much uh, taller than it normally is. Default is zero, I believe. Most importantly for me, I can set my font to a much larger font. In fact, whatever font size that I want. On top of that, if you're using a GUI client or a wrapper around Vim, such as Mac Vim, you can control that within the settings of Mac Vim. So I can go to, uh, let's actually go to my other one and Goyo this and watch what happens. All I have to do is hit my uh, command plus, I think it is. And I'm able to just get this as large as I want right here without actually having to leave. And I've got my distraction free writing and everything is exactly like I like. That's what's really cool about this. Of course, it comes and it comes right back in to my setting, allowing me to do, uh, work on my code and do whatever. So that's what I have for this particular video. Short and sweet. You can read everything that's on screen. Don't know why I'm going so slow there. But this is what the Goyo plugin does. You set your settings. If you're using TMUX, screen, whatever it is, you can actually modify all that. One thing I did notice, you can see right here, is uh, Goyo was messing with some things when it would come out of Goyo and it would uh, leave me in some weird state where some of my other settings for my VimRC aren't actually 
uh, set. So I had to actually use a, I sourced my VimRC again, and then I redraw that. Don't know if that's the best solution. It's just what I came up with temporarily. You can see also down here that we've got uh, the two commands that are actually called. You need to call the Goyo enter and the Goyo leave. That's what in turn calls the functions. You can see that right at the end as we go right there. And that's basically it. So this is Matt Petrowski. Hope you enjoy this little tip working with Vim and distraction-free working with the Goyo plugin. All right. See you later.